My friend Sean from Boxcar found this tape machine. And, oh, cool. And he gave it to me. And uh, ever since then, I've just, I got hooked and I've been collecting and just focusing on my own recording ever since. One of the guys found one of these Gibson amps at a garage sale. Really? And uh, the lady thought it was a broken uh, air conditioner. No So he way. got it for like 10 bucks. She's oh, like, man. it doesn't work. It's The air conditioner's broken, but oh, you can man. have it. Because so, it's funny, because uh, like these have been in the garbage. They've been in high schools and churches and, and old radio stations for 20 or 30 years, like where they've been, even the last 20 years, they've been unwanted. Yeah. But, and so you think, oh, I'll grab this and I'll mm -hmm. make a record. But there's a lot more that goes into it, right? Like, totally. You can't just get that in here and we start making a record. <laughs> I, yeah. You know, tape costs a lot of money these days. And to get a proper snake and, uh, just to get everything uh, calibrated properly, yeah. it's it takes a lot, but uh, it's I, worth it, man. When you get stuff that's been abandoned and is used, mm. this it sounds too bad, right? Like, yeah. there's like there's a point where it's like, okay, listen, this has character, but it's just like way too much hiss, yeah. or like <laughs> it just doesn't sound good. Yeah, it's true. Like yeah. I remember the first time we used this machine, it hadn't been fixed yet, and we tracked drums, and uh, when we played it back, the drums were just totally out of whack. Really? Like it was just like it affected the timing. It too? affected the timing, so oh, it was man. everything was delayed. Yeah. So there was really no chance you could <laughs> you could actually record anything. Yeah. Basically, you're limited to when you're making a record to eight tracks. So we usually do the drums on the first three. Okay. So to isolate and record a track, I would hit this button here. Yeah. So if I you can record as many as you want. Okay. And, and uh, would that, sorry, would that represent like three mics? Exactly. Okay. So then I would go over here to the board. Yeah. And I would use these three XLR inserts. Okay. And, uh, and you know, get, I sort of use some EQ here and, and stuff, but uh, generally we just send it right into the board. Yeah. I mean, I can play you some drums we just tracked today yeah. too, if you Please. want. So it's pretty easy to, to arm and then here are the drums we tracked today. Just three, three tracks. Let's see. Man. Did you track the bass at the same time? No, the bass was earlier. Okay. Yeah. It does the trick with just it sounds so good. Three tracks, yeah. So good. How much EQ do you do up here? I usually EQ. I'll EQ the snare quite a bit. Yeah. So that's pretty EQ. Okay. It's so great. So would you do any EQ when you're recording? I do, yeah. Yeah. And then you can do some afterwards? Just for fun, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. One of the things with analog that you probably don't think about at yeah. first is you have to be a good player in yeah. order for it to sound good, right? Like, that's great drumming. Like, it's in time, it sounds good. Mm -hmm. How does the, like, is there a scratch track that you're playing along with? Is there a click at all when you're yeah. doing it this way? How does well, that work? I usually start with a click just to get a bass rhythm track. Oh, okay. Um, and then, but yeah, you're right. You can't, uh, you can't copy and paste no, like no. parts, yeah. right? So you it can't has lock to... it in, like, cut it up and put it in time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, our, our friend, uh, our mutual friend, Ben Robinson, he told me that you like doing some kind of uh, unconventional miking techniques. Probably. Tell me about some of those. Um, he was talking about something you did with a bass. Uh. Yeah, I like to get kind of crazy with yeah. the bass. So usually, uh, it's, this is my secret, but... Uh, oh, then you don't no, have to that's, say. That's, that's okay. okay. <laughs> Nobody will watch this, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I usually feed... Uh, this trainer bass head in, okay. into this guitar amp here. Okay. And I use the guitar amp as an external speaker. And then uh, I'll mic it with this uh, Green Bullet harmonica mic. Okay. So I use like a really dirty harmonica mic to mic the bass. Yeah. So it's really dirty to start with. And then yeah. the, the mic itself just dirties it up totally. even more. And then I really crank it into the tape machine. Yeah. And it's 
It's very fat. And then another thing we do is we double the bass with a baritone guitar. So oh, it's cool. like uh, it's like two That's tracks cool of bass trick. through like the same uh, same system, same signal chain, but uh, just a on little on the more same track on a different track. On a different track. Yeah. So this would be the the two basses. This is, so this is uh, my friend Wayne's bass. Can I grab this Hofner here? Yeah, for sure. So I was actually thinking when I was listening to the the, the tracks that it had that kind of a Hofner sound. Have you used this for uh, bass or do yeah, you mostly I've, use a Fender? I've used that one too. This is interesting. I've never seen one like this. Is It, it sounds it? like how a bass ought to sound. Yeah. Even before you plug it in. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's true, yeah. You know, it's it's amazing. Are these flat ones too? Those are flat ones too, yeah. That's really cool. That's a beautiful bass. That really is. Yeah. 